some of the marketing campaigns may have stretched it a little bit with the blue water. Many Galvestonians rejected promoting Galveston as a beach resort city. Started the trend that eventually became shops, restaurants, casinos, amusement parks, standing over the water here in Galveston. You had to be able to afford to rent a bathing suit. The healing powers of the salt water of the Gulf of Mexico. It's July, it's hot. Walk to the beach with me. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's walk to the beach. Hey, what's up, how are you? Hey, how are y'all? Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. The hotels and bathhouses that popped up here along the beach were a massive draw, bringing thousands of visitors to Galveston. It is summertime here in Galveston, and we all know what that means. Millions of tourists every year come to Galveston to enjoy our beaches. And since the city of Galveston was founded, we have seen no shortage of entrepreneurs. As it became easier to travel from Houston to Galveston, businesses started to pop up all along the beach, providing services to beachgoers, enhancing their trip to Galveston and the Gulf of Mexico. Most notably, Galveston saw the rise of bathhouses. This video is brought to you by Texas' oldest newspaper, The Daily News, bringing you the news since 1842. Support your local newspaper, The Daily News. Now imagine Galveston back in the 1880s, before the seawall was here. Galveston was the most important port in Texas by far, one of the most important in the Gulf of Mexico, making it the driver of the Galveston economy, where today most of the economy comes from tourism. Galveston's beach tourism economy really got started in the 1880s. Galveston was taking a page out of the book of other seaside resort towns such as Atlantic City for people who wanted to come down and enjoy the beach for a day or two. So here we are standing on 23rd or Tremont Street and the beach. Now this area before and after the seawall was built has been home to multiple bathhouses. It really was the epicenter of beach tourism in Galveston for over 100 years. Early bathhouses in Galveston would provide swimsuits. Owning a swimsuit was considered a frivolous expense or something that you didn't really need to have all the time. People didn't go swimming in the ocean all the time like they do today. As these bathhouses grew in popularity, they not only provided swimsuits and fresh water, but also restaurants, changing rooms, swimming pools, spas, and became what they like to call health resorts. Now in the 1880s and 1890s, going to one of these bathhouses was really for the wealthy. You had to be able to afford to travel from Houston or somewhere in Texas down to the beach and then be able to afford to rent a bathing suit. Before the 1900 storm and before the seawall was built, bathhouses really just stuck out here on the beach. They were elevated above the water, knowing that they were gonna have inundation from storm surge, hurricanes, and things like that. They understood that there was a chance that they could be wiped out but they were willing to take that chance and make some money on the growing beach economy. Now standing here on the beach, looking towards 24th and 23rd Street, once stood the Beach Hotel, designed by architect Nicholas Clayton. The Beach Hotel was a premier hotel in the United States, sitting right on the beach. The Pagoda Bathhouse stood right in front of the Beach Hotel, one of the first bathhouses in Galveston. The Pagoda Bathhouse opened in July of 1883, and it had an eye-catching design. This bathhouse featured two dome-like structures. The dome on the right was designated for the men, and the dome on the left was designated for the women and children. The Pagoda Bathhouse was destroyed on September 8, 1900, during the 1900 storm. When the first stretch of seawall was completed in 1904, a new era of tourism was born, tourists coming down to Galveston to see the 17-foot-high seawall standing above the Gulf of Mexico and spend some time at the beach. The Surf Bathhouse, located on 33rd and Seawall, with an exotic design, tall towers, and a rooftop terrace. The Surf Bathhouse opened in 1908. The Surf quickly gained prominence and ended up hosting the Texas Democratic Convention in 1910. But unfortunately, the Surf Bathhouse was destroyed during the 1915 hurricane. The Breakers Bathhouse, built around 1910, only lasted about five years. A giant bathhouse with hundreds of changing rooms, tons of souvenirs, and doling out all of the fun things you could do here on the beach. The Breakers Bathhouse was destroyed during the 1915 storm. One name in particular has stuck around since the 1880s, Murdoch's. Starting out as a bathhouse and evolving as tourism changed here in Galveston. Murdoch's Bathhouse has adapted through the years, shifting from offering bathing suit rentals, changing rooms and showers, to selling refreshments, beach supplies, and souvenirs. 
Another historic Galveston institution set up shop in Murdoch's when they first opened, Guido Seafood. Despite facing multiple hurricanes, Murdoch's remained resilient. Murdoch's was rebuilt after the 1900 storm, after the 1909 storm, after the 1915 storm, after Hurricane Carla in 1961, and after Hurricane Ike in 2008. As you walk around Murdoch's today, you'll be able to see all of these older pylons, the pylons of Murdoch's past. During hurricanes and tropical storms, as the bathhouses would crumble, the broken up debris would be transformed into shrapnel, creating projectiles that would damage businesses and homes right across the street from these bathhouses. The Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace opened in 1916. This bathhouse was built on top of the seawall, not exactly right on the beach. The Crystal Palace not only served bathers, but also had a heated indoor pool, an ice skating rink, restaurants, and a roof garden. The Crystal Palace was around until 1941 until it was demolished. Beachgoers also had the opportunity to rent rolling bathhouses. You can rent these for a couple hours or an entire day. This gave you a place to go and change and store your things while you're having a great day at the beach. Many Galvestonians ended up opposing these rolling bathhouses because they were considered an eyesore. Going to the beach in Galveston had always been popular with the locals. Many Galvestonians rejected promoting Galveston as a beach resort city. Many city leaders wanted to maintain a status of a financial center, not so much a beach town as they were trying to maintain and drive outside investment into Galveston's business district. But as we can see, the desire to go to the beach, spend time and money on this recreation, eventually won out. These early bathhouses are what started the trend that eventually became shops, restaurants, casinos, amusement parks, standing over the water here in Galveston. You ended up having casinos and restaurants like the Balinese Room and amusement parks like the Pleasure Pier. Knowing that we get slammed by hurricanes every few years, opening up a bathhouse may not seem like the best idea, but there's gotta be a reason why Murdoch's is still open and you had other piers to be built out over the water of the Gulf of Mexico. Making the beach an accessible recreation activity brought on a few different things. Activities along the beachfront, including Electric Park, one of the first amusement parks in this part of the country, restaurants and short-term rentals. As you had hundreds or thousands of people flocking to Galveston every day in the summer, coming to enjoy the ocean. As it became easier to hop on a train from Houston down to Galveston, you had plenty of day trippers that would come down here just for a day. And these bathhouses would provide a place for you to go and rinse off before you head back to Houston at the end of the day. If you've ever been to the beach, you know that salt water is a bit sticky. One thing we have to ask is without those initial bathhouses in the 1880s, would Galveston have gone on to evolve into the beach city that it is? I believe they helped bolster Galveston as a beach town, as a beach resort city. Would institutions like the Balinese Room and Pleasure Pier even exist? Even though some of the marketing campaigns may have stretched it a little bit with the blue water, you would hear phrases like the healing powers of the salt water of the Gulf of Mexico. Galveston was poising itself as a health resort city. Okay, look, you guys made it to the end of the video. I appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. Wherever you are watching this, make sure you like this video. If you're on YouTube, go subscribe. If you're on Instagram, follow us. If you are on TikTok, you know what to do. And don't forget the Galveston Unscripted podcast, where we sit down and interview historians and experts in their fields all about Galveston history and culture. Just hop on over to Apple, Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, and Galveston Unscripted is there. Ways you can support Galveston Unscripted. We've got merch, we've got shirts, we've got hats, we've got all kinds of stuff in our store. Go check it out. Okay, I'm almost home. Thanks for walking with me. We'll see you next time on Galveston Unscripted. For all historical photos, thank you to the Galveston and Texas History Center at the Rosenberg Library. Let's go to the beach. Going to the beach. The water almost looks blue from here. No doubt. <laughs>